everybody, I hope you're well. Good news and bad news, let's start off on a sour note. Ooh, someone's nicked me bricks. There's about 500 out there, due to be collected tomorrow at 30p each. Got here this morning, and uh, all gone. But there we go, I don't know how to feel about that, because well, sales are going to skip, doesn't it? So, I never would have had the money. But, just baddies, man, the baddies, the right. But let's turn that frown upside down, because look what's been delivered. The joists, beautiful. So we'll go into that, we'll go into a lot of detail this time in terms of where I got them from, the company, um, how to install them, what to look for, the do's and don'ts, that sort of thing. So we'll go into a little bit of detail with it and uh, yeah, and then we'll get going. So we'll turn you around, go through a few things and we'll get started. Right then, I got these from a place called Minera Roof Trusses and Joists. Uh, I've only used them once before on uh, this video and they were fantastic, really helpful on the phone. Sent loads of different designs through, made sure I was ordering everything right. And uh, yeah, and they've, they've been fantastic. And I ordered these on Friday. Today is the following Wednesday and they were here at 9am. So that's only two clear working days between ordering them and then being delivered. So I can't ask for more than that, really. Um, these particular joists are going, one side is going into a wall and sat on the wall and then the other side is going to be on a joist hanger onto what they call as in Minera called a pole plate which I'll show you later which is basically wall plate ledger plate whatever you want to call it piece of 9 by 2 um bolted to the wall and then it's just joist hangered off it all will become apparent a little bit later um one thing to remember with these things there is a, a top and a bottom to them and that's very important now they should be marked top and bottom uh, and there we go look t t for top there we go another way of knowing is you see the metal webbing how at the top it's the metal starts at the top if that makes any sense and then you can double check that on the other end that's at the top as well if this joist was upside down if I get up actually and show you, if I was going to saw that upside down like that, then the metal wouldn't be at the top. Do you know what I mean? That the furthest bits to the end would be at the bottom. Does that make any sense? Do you know what I mean? So metal, metal to the top at the end is a bit of a, a fail safe. But as I say that they should all be marked. But as you can see, they're only marked in pen, which means that uh, human error, some could be missed, but I think if you stick to that rule, you should be all right. Um, from what I can tell here, the ends are, the joist is identical, either side, symmetrical, I should say. Um, the others weren't, I'll show you those in there in a second. Um, so, but this is how they came off the lorry, they came off from there, straight to there, so they're all the, the, the round, the way around that they got delivered so i'm going to be putting this side into the wall and that side is going to be joist hangered and i will double check that with the um documents that they gave me and all the instructions and whatnot that comes with it as does all the wall hang uh, joist hangers for it as i say the pole plates as they call it and the strung backs now i will uh show you what the strung backs are and the ones that are already installed inside now. Um, one thing you have got to remember is at this point in the middle here, um, if it is in the middle, in this case it is, in fact there's a middle there, I think it's a five mil difference between the two. Um, that is what you, these strung back so yeah, again, it's only, it's only three by two, so you know, it's a posh name, but that's all it is. They, once they're all installed, have got to run all, all in line and these strung backs then attach to that there. I will show you that now inside, so that makes more sense. And uh, yeah, this should be quite a simple job because he says, I've only got to go in here. They are extremely light, so I could do this job on my, on my own. However, my daddy's coming around to help us because the most difficult part of this should be, he says, is getting this pole plate, let's call it, uh, along the wall, bang on level with the one that we installed a couple of weeks ago, which is there. We've got a board up there, so we've got a datum that we can take our level off 
and transfer that level to the other side of this wall because this floor here is continuous all the way along and we don't want any bumps so we don't want to go down 10 mil or up 10 mil or anything like that any discrepancy you will feel it as you're walking across so we need to get it as bang on as possible uh that's the only tricky bit really once that's in he says it should be simple because we've already got the pockets cut out exactly the same way as we did with these ones uh all at 400 centers in this case we're just dropping them in and as i say they are very light and we should go to do it uh more or less by myself so um yeah i'll start transferring his level across now what if dad's get here get this plate on somehow uh i've got an idea i'll divide it and we'll go through it so yeah right let's get all that stuff in so they get nicked like the bricks and get started and just to quickly show you what information you get uh with your order it's all here in what i was talking about earlier about making sure that the joists are the right way around and everything just open up the envelope it's all there look it's clearly got the joist hanger on that side um clearly not on that side that's into the wall there on the wall plate as it's got detail there uh, then it's got the measurements to the strong back uh, it's, so you can double check that with what you've got and make sure they all go the same way around so you even get a plan with it uh, where to, where they go it's all it's all there isn't it it's all there it's ace really really good so if you fancy um, getting these I've not being paid for this by the way I just find them really ace and so I'll happily um, endorse a company because they've helped me out loads uh, minera based in uh, wrexham i believe uh speak to uh hugh or john is my advice to you and then when it comes to payments you'll uh hopefully get a chance to talk to the lovely near so there you go so there you have it then so just to show you what i was talking about in terms of these strong backs that's that strong back there which is uh, again just a piece of 3b2 that we put we put about six or seven in and then we just slotted both of those through we'll show you when we do this one just so they're up there um, but they attach to the upright that's in the middle of the joist now obviously it makes perfect sense for that upright to be in the middle now for whatever reason when you do yours it might be offset now if it is they all need to be in line when you do it so you can quite easily put one if it's offset there and then you put your next one in it's over here and then and then you've you've knackered it so just to keep in mind that when to when you're installing them those uprights there are all in line for that reason there but it'll all become apparent when we fit them okay so as i said before this is going to be the most awkward part of this task is getting this pole plate bolted to the wall perfectly level with our existing floor which is over here so when you come up to the top of the stairs you go that way or you can go that way and you don't feel any bump in the um in the floor because any discrepancy and you will feel it and it's one of them and you know it's there or i'll know it's there and it'll always bug me so under here you may remember if you're uh, if you watched the other episodes is the only existing timber um here we've took out everything else everything from basically that join there that way and that way is all brand new that is existing and it is ever so slightly higher than our new stuff there's just a couple of mil in it so there is if you might just be able to see it you can just see it there kind of how that board just bows up slightly because that existing there is ever so slightly than that this board is temporary it's going to lift it i can cut all that timber down just that little bit there or replace it whatever at a later date to get it down to this not an issue all that means is that this lovely overhang that we've got here and this lovely timber that we've got just there as you can see we can't use it to go off it would have been very easy to do that but we can't because uh, again we'll be ever so slightly higher so what we're going to do set me a level up there clear line of sight of a datum point which is i'm going to use that and that casts a laser level all the way down you can't see it here but you'll see it when i go over there along that wall there so i haven't got to move the laser level that's going to stay in situ and on and we'll go from there if ever you're doing this sort your datum out 
put a cross on the floor and then if you've got to come back another day and then that laser has to go up there or something you can take your datum off exactly the same point so always mark it and all we're going to do because you can over complicate this but we're going to keep it really simple i'm going to use this bit of sheathing as a datum point as a uh gauge rod or whatever and i'm going to mark i can't do it now because i'm uh, holding the camera i'm going to mark where that laser hits the um, hits our pole there. And then all I'm gonna do then is transfer that, which I'll show you, far easier to show you, over there, all very, very simple. You can do it all yourself. So I'll mark that and I'll take you over there and I'll show you what to do next. So that's where we've just come from. We took our datum off that point. We bought, I marked it where that intersected the laser line there i've marked top so i don't put it upside down i know it's obvious because that's so far down the bottom of it but sometimes you'll do this and it'll be just 10 mil after center and then you can turn it upside down and get all your measurements wrong uh, so what we've got to do now then is where i want to mark it is put that to the wall i'm out of it let's uh, get rid of my pencil Put that to the wall and then where my laser line intersects the line that we've drawn on there i mark the bottom of that and that line then is the exactly level with the top of our joist that we had over there and then if we do that a couple of times all the way down offer our timber up top of the timber goes to that line and then that then should be level with what we've got over there it's as simple as that that's all we're going to do yes we can check it after and double check it and everything before we really bolt it onto the wall um just so we don't you know come a cropper or whatnot but that's it that's all you got to do now what i've done here it, it, well it's very difficult if we got that timber up place it to the wall and then drill deep with the SDS and then put the bolts in it can move up a couple of mil and that, that's exactly what we don't want it's quite difficult to do that way so I've utilized these pockets where the old joists were and I've just put some timber in that one's gone in nice and tight no fixings just wedged it in this one's fairly loose as you can see but it can't fall out so that, that's all it is it, that's no that's not for structural or anything like that it's just to help us get it up here and then what we can do we can do our marks put our timber on and just quite easily just put a screw in there through the timber into that and a screw in there not really impact driver keeping the timber perfectly still as we do it and that's it then that is on the wall where we need it then we can go for gold with our big fixings and put them in um uh, and as we go it's as simple as that what i'll also be doing is which is what i did upstairs is where the two timbers meet i'm going to fortify the ends so they sort of it's not a scarf joint i know it's not but uh you'll see what i mean just so that we're not, we're not going to butt them together basically we're just going to uh do it a little bit better than that uh yeah and then repeat that process down there with a the second piece of timber and then there we have it really that's all that's all it is it all will come if i've lost you at any point there it'll uh become far more obvious as we're doing it right just about to get started and get it on the wall once i've just wood screwed into our little uh, infills there just to hold it in place what i might do i think i'm gonna do is just use uh just a couple of these concrete screws just uh firm it all in place so then it can't move and then once we've started putting the joists in uh in between the joists i'm going to start uh, i'm going to put these bad boys straight through into the brick um and then it's going absolutely nowhere i won't put them in first because i don't want the nuts as it is there lots it's protruding out landing on a joist um and fouling it on the on the joist anger and the reason why i can't measure them now is because there's a discrepancy where the old the new wall uh meets the old wall that's got a cavity that hasn't and uh 
there's no point trying to work it all out and you know trying to show off with your measurements everything might just do it as you go along uh, it's all fairly simple but i just want to show you that whenever um i can i buy uh timco fixings no matter what fixings i need be these kind of bolts whatever i always go for timco they are ace unfortunately my local timco supplier which is eca uh tools um in uh, used to be in Oldbury, it's now moved to Aston so where i used to be able to just pop out and get and, and stock up it's a bit of a jaunt out now so I've had to go with um, the roll plug uh, equivalents in Screwfix, because obviously Screwfix are more readily available. Now, not only are they more expensive than Timco, check out what I love about these, right? If you're ever unsure about what drill bits to use or whatnot, all that info there, it's, it's just ace, isn't it? You can just go for everything, and it's, it's all there, clear as day. Any other supplier, in this case, roll plug, that's, I mean, just nothing. It is there, uh, but it's just, it's so difficult to see and to go through. Whereas they, I mean, they're just ace and they're cheaper, and in my opinion, they're as good, if not better. So, if you've ever got a choice, go for them. Uh, well, yeah, well, they're not paying me to say that, but in fact, I've paid them loads, I've had them for years. But anyway, here we go. That's your free advertising done, Timco. Uh, right, let's, let's get some on the wall. Right, just to show you what I meant earlier, just by putting those pieces of timber in, we can just offer it up, put a wood, keep it nice and steady to our mark, which is there from the laser, and just put a wood screw in, and then do the same to our mark down there. And it's uh, it just held it all nice in, nice in place. If, if we were holding it in place and then SDSing it, it could shake really easily and it, it could be in a world of hurt. So that's worked out well, those little pockets being out. Utilise them quite nicely. So uh, we're good now because we can double check that now with our laser. As you can see, it runs straight the way through. Double checking it with the level which we're extremely happy with. So now what I can do is put some of these concrete fixings in, um, which to be honest, will probably do the job as uh, for what they are in themselves, but we'll put them in just so it can't go anywhere. Uh, repeat the process down there for our, for our second one. I got confused, forget about cutting out at 45, I was gonna butt them up, it's, uh, I was thinking about something else. Um, and then as the joists start to go in, where we definitely know a joist won't be, I can put those big boy bolts through. That's simply, that's that really, so we'll get that started. Right, we've just jumped ahead. We've got this one on. Um, exactly the same way as we did before. Put a couple of uh, fixings in. And then what I've done is clamped a piece of 4B2 just to the bottom of it, just to create this ledge. There's a couple of screws in it as well. Let's keep it as tight as we can. It's only a guide. Um, just so then when we're putting the joists on, like so, they've got something to sit on as we're doing this, because I'll probably be putting the majority of these in on my own. And the plan is, is to set up the scaffold in the middle, get the joists up, slot them in to the pockets, and then down onto this really easy but before i do that i'll be putting the joist hangers on um, first we put this one in as a bit of a dry run because i thought it's going to take a bit of fettling a bit up a bit of down let's just see where we are and believe it or not we are beautifully flush to the top of there which we know is right and then to the level we are fantastic so if there's now a discrepancy between that floor, ignore that one, that floor and then this floor, I don't know what else we can do in order, or could have done, um, to avoid it. Because as it stands, by the level, by the laser, by all the measurements, we are spot on, which we're very happy about. But uh, as dynamic as this job is, as you go on, we sort of change our minds about this and that, as soon as we've seen the rooms and whatnot. So I've just got to talk you through a quick design change um which is going to take a little slow things down because i've got to do something over there which i'll go into now then i'm going to go along and mark uh because that one's going there that one's staying there now 
it's got to come out for a little bit. But that's where it's going to go. It's going to go tight against that wall. Um, and then that's basically, once this is fixed in, that's exactly where it's going to be. And then we'll mark all our 400 centres off this one. So I can go along there now, make sure that these pockets are the, are the right width, a couple of them a bit tight. Obviously, that one's quite big, look. Um, and then it's, we can just fly along then, but I'll just talk you through what's changing over there. Right, this is the front of the house and um, a bit of pre-thinking um, about where your pipes and what they're going to be is imperative for this kind of floor because you can't notch them, you can't just lift the floorboard up and, and do any of that. You've got to thread them in as you go so they're in there for the plumber to do their thing. Now, in, it goes for waste pipes as well, but all our waste pipes are going out to the gable wall that side so we haven't got to worry about anything like that for here. So uh, it's gas pipes only. Now, we were originally going to put the boiler in the bathroom, which was there, just behind this steel up there, which is the reason why we put those gas pipes in line with them there. Uh, the meter is just in that box there in the, uh, in the hallway. Um, change of heart. The bathroom is going to be as big as we thought it was, so the boiler is now going in the um, kitchen and we're going to put it I think in the far corner facing out over there uh, which means then these are not in the correct place now I'm fairly sure that the gas can come up across connecting come along 90 degree and then go through that beautifully positioned hole where the joist was there um, which is perfectly in line with that and go straight away through to where when the boiler is going to be however that's obviously more copper so beans that if it was going in a straight line I'd have to knock a hole through that wall anyway I'm going to do that now get those pipes out thread them through this hole here along there which is far more economical with the copper I'll be using less of it and that's always best anyway um, and then take it directly above the boiler, in which case then we can um, thread some more through as we put the joist through that way. So there's some on the other side of the wall ready for the plumber to do his thing. So I've got to do that. It's going to slow proceedings down, but we'll get that sorted and then we'll crack on. Just punch that little hole through there. Got the copper out and re-threaded it through which isn't easy to say, down there. So I mean, that could not be any per more perfect that. Just exists all by itself, we haven't done anything for it. And it's perfectly in line um, with a gap. I mean, you'll, be, you'll do well not to really with these joists, but perfectly in line with the, the meter. So, excellent. Uh, right then, so what I can do now is go along cut these out, get them all in the right place, and then we're flying. Right, so as you can see, we've got a bit of a lick on. They're not taking long at all to install it's the beauty of these things. It's been a bit awkward just going up and over that wall, um, but you know, it is where it is. Uh, but we're flying now, there's no obstructions apart from the totem pole, which I'll get rid of now. We're more than three meters just over out now, so I can thread my strung backs in, 3 by 2 uh, either side of the upright there, one either side, and then I've got my copper, which I can thread through as well, in line with our hole there, and just leave it, and then the plumber can, or gas engineer, gas engineer, can um, pull it across and do whatever he wants to do, but it's, it's all installed, so there we go, because once again, just to reiterate, uh, you can't notch these, so you need to think about waste pipes, pipes, that sort of thing at this stage um, and, and install them as you go. So just to show you the strung backs here, there it is, look, and where you can see they meet in the middle, there, there's one either side. So that's all I'm going to do and then I will fix them in once the entire uh, floor has been laid, as in the joists, when all the joists are in. And we'll make sure that there's no weight on them. 
um, turn around. I'm sure there's no weight on them, so I haven't got, you know, I'm not putting all my weight on one, it's flexing there and then I fix it, because then it'll just potentially just stay down there. So uh, get all these joists in and then fix them in at a later, at a later stage. Um, I've put them all up there now for ease because it's getting a bit awkward here swinging them around and whatnot, but now they're up there, I can just drop them down as we go. So there we have it. One change of tack I have done, I did put that piece of timber up there, look use it as a ledge and I forgot on one and I put the joist on it and then fixed it well there's a little discrepancy in the thickness the height of these joists to the timber so that that one where is it? I think it's that one is ever so slightly low so I've gone away from that little concept and all I'm doing now is as you can see here is just each one just clamping a little bit of timber underneath um, which is obviously low, and then I'm just remembering just to lift it and fix it as we go. And I've already put the hangers on the ends on each one as well. So uh, that's it. Uh, I might get a little bit of footage actually putting it in. I know we haven't actually showed you doing anything, but it's all in the previous episode, isn't it? So this is more of a, that's how you do it. Because actually physically fitting them is just picking them up and slotting it in. I mean, that is it. So um, I will get a bit of footage, but... I can't promise it's going to be riveting. So as mentioned before, these are the bolts that we're using. Unfortunately not Timco, but I couldn't get to the place as I said. 120mm, uh, 12.5 uh, concrete screw bolts from uh, Screwfix. 10mm uh, drill bit, as it says there. So I've drilled through. They don't come in washers. I don't know, are you supposed to use washers even if they don't come in them? I don't know. We're putting them in anyway. It's going to do no harm at all. Pocket rocket, impact wrench, not an impact driver. And do you know where that's going? Nowhere. I was gonna put this one in on my own just to show you that it can be done. Um, just how light they are and whatnot. First, as promised, I'm going to put my copper in. Spread it through. Perfect. Do that again. And as you can see, I've got enough there to get to the other side. See that's sticking out, so it just makes the insulation of the next one a bit awkward. So I've got to come in at an angle and thread it through. Here we go, that's it, that's in the wall. I just like more like right to feed it through these pieces of timber, but that's that done there. That's resting on the trunk and that piece of timber, so I'll get my PPM nailer, nail that into our uh, whole place, making sure that it's 
400 centimeters right from the very start. And that's it. And then just repeat all the way down. Who's turned up? Say hello, Rich. Hello. He, uh, no, I won't grow up. Um, he, uh, he's just had a. Anyone can grow up. He's had a. Well, it's been to a, another job and uh, he's finished a little bit early. So he's all wrapped up there. So he's come and give us a hand, which is nice. So we just finished these last ones off. Uh, old Papa Bear is down there. Look. I'll show you in a bit, working hard on that. Um, yeah, there we go. Just putting these, uh, these strung backs in now. So, the only thing I haven't mentioned so far is that they go tight, they go tight to the wall that way, and then that one gets pushed down and tight to the wall that way, and it just stops any uh, sidey sidey movie movie. And then that, and then that is about that. And then we're going to start putting the, uh, the OSB down, which I've just been and bought. So, excellent. It's all looking rather lovely, but not as lovely. Is that? As views go, that's all right, any Happy with that. Then that look like something. Yeah, look, that straight to the wall, nice and tight. It's the same other way. Right, what we're going to do now then is set ourselves up for. Um, our boards, where we're going to start, which ones to cut, blah blah blah. Have something to eat, then blast it out. What I will quickly show you is uh, some of you asked what glue we use. Well, I like to use this stuff because we use it before and it's ace PU 700 uh, Max Multi Constructive Multi Use Construction Adhesive. Uh, that stuff, uh, but as usual, um, that's I get that stuff from where I get all my Timco products from, which is a little bit too far away just to pop out to. So I've had to get a screw fix and get a couple more cans of some difference. So we'll see which is best. Uh, this stuff is ice; it won't go wrong. But we'll try the other one. I'll show you what it is in a sec, and then we'll go from there. Right then, we decided to go for it. Uh, Rich has just marked out. Huh? Huh? Uh, Rich has just marked out um, where we're starting from and where the cuts are going to be and the most uh, economical way of doing it in terms of making sure there's a certain way of doing it that an off cut will go in another place rather than just going for it and having loads of waste. So all that's sorted now, we'll give it a go. As soon as that glue is uh, expired we'll show you the other stuff, see if it's any better, give our review on that and we'll get it down so I'll put it on time lapse. And uh, we'll get this, get this floor down. Last little bit down, and that's the room. Excellent. The only one we haven't done yet, what this one's for. We thought it best to incorporate 
all of that in one board. So from right from the very top of the stairs, all the way across, full board, round this corner here and all in one. So we've just got a, a bit of fettling to do because the structure underneath there is original uh, and it's a little bit high. I did add to that a little bit, so but I follow what was there. So a bit maybe uh, went a bit too far too quick, but we'll go rectify that and then that board will go in there. And there's our flooring done. Isn't that right, Rich? Four minutes late. Four, oh, yes, he said, what the time is this? Half past three. Ah, oh, three. He said 5.34. 34. 3.34, sorry. 3.34, so it's still quite an hour and a quarter. Hmm. Not bad, is it? Yeah. Not bad, a bit of planning. A bit of planning, getting the joist right, and it just shows you, and it just uh, it flies down. So, excellent. Um, this glue, this is the other stuff by uh, Everbuild. Uh, where are we? There you go. Construction Pro. Uh, it's only as good as a bloke screwing it onto the tin, onto the gun, because I, uh, I had a bit of a, what do you call this? A cross thread mishap, and it I went everywhere. Foam yeah, see, it's a bit down there as well. Look, you see that? Just missed the toes, but we're all right. If it happens in somebody's kitchen, we'll be knackered. But there we go. It's it's not as easy to control as the other stuff, but if it if it works, it works, isn't it? Right. It's quite good for gap filling, doesn't it? It one? does, yeah. It's a lot more foamy. It stays ex expanded yeah. longer. So if you have got any slight undulations on new floorboard, uh, old joists. It might be better. Might be better because the other stuff doesn't foam. It foams initially when it comes out, and then it just liquefies, as we've said before. So it doesn't fill any gaps at all. It's literally just the glue. So this stuff seems to, uh, yeah, as Rich says, can take undulations out. Is that the Ooh. word? Ooh. That'll do anyway. Do right. It, time of the day, anyway. <laughs> it will when it's right. Then we'll have a cup of coffee, and then we'll have a look at that. Uh, Rich is just pouring the coffees out. I've just been thinking of a way of. Of getting those that structure up top of the stairs down a little bit, and I uh, didn't realise that I've got my router here, a little palm router, little Dewalt bad boy, a little pocket rocket. So what I'm thinking of doing, getting that board up. <laughs> got any more now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get all the Cecil out, and then we're going to um, just take a couple of mil off and just basically just go over it and get it down and like. And, and, and I don't know else to, you know, I can't really jazz it up really. Uh, yeah. Uh, more, more doing, less talking. Yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I might put you on the most boring time lapse in the world ever, but I might spare you from it, I don't know. You're about to find out what I choose. Right, well this is just an exercise now, quickly I can forget things, because when I did all this, I remember now, looking at it, it's, um, it was all done temporarily in order for this to be all fettled with and, and sort of fixed by uh, the main man here. So all it was was a couple of screws holding this bit in here, well that bit in there, across there, which was high. So we've just notched it out, or Rich has, just so it sits back on this wall and on that wall a little bit lower which in turn will pull them that little bit lower and bring it perfectly level with what we've got over there. And we've just stuck the level over from this joist to that joist. And uh, we are absolutely spot on. So as we knew we were, because that's what the laser said. In fact, if that was wrong, I said to Rich earlier, if this didn't work out with that, with how good it looked on the laser, then something's wrong with Somewhere, and I don't know what it would have been. Sort of the well, yeah, yeah. Blame the tools, man. Blame the tools. Absolutely, every time. So, put this back in. Might have put a couple of joist hangers in it. Um, so, it's all done, ready, uh, permanently. Put a board over it. And we're done, aren't we? Yeah, we are indeed. Right, Richard's just left. Uh, fair play to him. He didn't have to come today, but he did. Um, I've just cut a very elaborate. Uh, cut out of this 
OS, piece of OSB, which you can't see, it's camouflaged itself, look, around there, blah, blah, to go around that wall and around the stairs and go down. It's gonna finish just shy of that one, but we'll piece that in in a second. But it, me, the only battery that I've got for me DeWalt sort just ran out, you see where, you can just see the dark bit there. It just ran out of battery there, so I had to finish that off with a, a semi-blunt um, multi-tool blade. So I could do what he's fitting first time. So we'll see, let's have a look. Well, I give it my best shot, but I'm just shy. And if you can see that, that's where that board. Can you see that? Let's zoom in. That's where that board finishes. That's where mine is. I see to zip that back a bit, plus that little gap. Oh, that's annoying. I'll obviously cut that bit. That's a few mil off that bit. So that goes in a little bit further, which means I've got to wait for that to charge a bit. And we're pushing on time, only because of the noise of it for the neighbours. We're obviously in this big echoey room, aren't we? And the neighbours are right behind. Where are we? Right behind that brick there. You know, we're 100 mil away from them. So, anyway, we'll sort it. Well, there we go. It's very light, I'll stay light tonight because I've had a bit of a play around in here. Got myself set up for the stud walls, got the door frame out from the door frame that was over there just to see where we are. And that's the wall that separates daughter's room to the bathroom. Corridor along here, bathroom, beautiful. We're happy, we're very happy. I'll see what else I'm happy with as well. Over that, our, our floor coming down here has joined the floor we did a couple of weeks ago. And that is, let's have a look at you, look. That is just, it's just beautiful. Not a bit of rock in that at all. Just fantastic. So it just goes to show, doesn't it? There's prep work, a decent laser level, and a bit of know how. And it's worked out lovely. So if you ever do anything like this, using a laser level, just use a stick with a pencil mark on it. Don't bother with the measurements. You can get yourself mixed up and there's loads of room for error if you do things like that. I mean, if you're confident, you do it all the time, obviously. Knock yourself out. It's not wrong. But you just you can't go wrong with a staff. Pencil mark, line, done. Beautiful. Right then. Get that all the floor is in. I'm so happy. Beautiful. Look at that. Didn't exist yesterday morning. Two days work, that is. Anyway. Right then. Should we get some stud walls up? Right then, well I think that staying late last night has paid off because we're good to go, we're all loaded out. All the power's up here, all my tools are ready, so we can get going. All I've got to do now is work out where exactly I want these walls. So this part of the house is just going to be a uh, bathroom and bedroom, that's it, um, with a bit of a landing here, which will be formed when we build the walls. So there's not really a lot to do, there's only two walls to build. It's just where we're going to put them. So I have decided where we want how big we want the bathroom 
and I've squared off from that wall to what will be our wall here and that's that line just down there and then I run into a bit of an issue because coming off where we want to come off here which isn't there um, I'm going to attach that piece of timber to this reveal here and then so you can imagine that's, that's on and our wall is going to come to wherever that is to there but I'm just using that as a straight edge at the moment to mark our line um, as you can see where the old meets uh, well this is all old isn't this there's this step in here for some reason this wall is uh, goes into single skin from from a double there which plays into our hands really because that is a um a nice place just to put all our pipe work for the shower um save it going in the studs and whatnot and making the studs really weak or having to build the stud wall thicker to uh, to be able to incorporate all the pipe work we can put them all to that wall and then build that wall off so that comes through flush so using that to my advantage but we are a mile out from being square from this corner um if i squared off that wall you see that line's going that's out by about 25 mil in in less than a meter so what I've done, I've kept this internal corner square, 90 degrees from where that is, and then it leaves this uh, landing completely out, but um, it's about 20 mil out in that, but there's nothing not to do. I can get it out in a dab there maybe, but uh, yeah, it is where it is. So simply now by building this wall here, uh, that will automatically form that bedroom. And away we go, so yeah. Let's go for it. Well, I'm no chippy, and I think that proves this struggle with that. Getting the angles right and getting up there, that's over three metres tall, that is. So it was just a bit of awkward. But anyway, that's it, essentially. Those two walls are done. Um, obviously forms the bathroom, which in turn forms the bedroom. I've just got to build this out now, put that door exactly where I want it. Um, and then blocking above it, and then... That's basically it. I think I'm going to go down the old window above that, above the bed, uh, above the bathroom door. I think because that's going to be that's going to let quite a lot of light in those two windows. So just to help get a bit of natural light to the, uh, the landing area, I think. But as a couple of you have uh, rightly pointed out, which it never even occurred to me, because uh, it's a three-story house now, they've all got to be fire doors. That's going to have to be um, fireproof glass or Pyrex or whatever it's called. Um, so I've got to look into that, whether it's actually a, uh, if it's super duper extortionate price, uh, I might have to think twice about it, because I want to do that one and the bedroom one through there, so I'm going to have to do a bit of research on that, or would a standard double glazed unit do it, I don't know.
don't know. Anyway, moving on. I'll let you know as soon as I know. Um, yeah, so I've got to go uh, be somewhere now, unfortunately. So it's nowhere near a full day today. But I'm going to get um, this done tomorrow. Um, I've put that piece of timber up there because what I'm thinking of doing is studding this wall off, leaving a gap, as you can see there. Um, an insulated gap uh, for sound. So no fixing to go into this wall at all, um, which I think should be all right. Not getting the hell out of it. It'll be nice and strong, especially when the boards are on. Uh, yeah, so um, that is that. But what you may have just noticed on the old uh, time lapse is that my me, uh, me daughter turned up and, sh and uh, passed on a delivery that's come today. Picker have sent us, me, Mick and Rich, uh, a box of these each, a set of this. Excellent. In that ice, so we'll have a look at them tomorrow. Um, out with the old, this little bad boy, and in with the new. In that ice, it's very nice of them. I'll have to put the old uh, pay promotion now on the front of the video, I suppose. But uh, yeah, excellent. We're giving them a go tomorrow, open it all up, and uh, bring it through its paces. Brilliant, thank you, Picker. Beautiful. Well, it's the following morning. It's a gloomy day outside, but it's all sunshine and smiles in here. We're getting somewhere, aren't we? Uh, so what I'm going to do now, put in time lapse, and we will uh, get this door frame um, made round and the top of it done. It's a bit awkward because it's longer than the timber, and I, I don't want to go out and buy more timber. So I think I'm going to join the piece. I've got a bit of thinking to do. How to do that best? Um, as long as it's all straight and true, it doesn't matter. It's not structural or anything like that. So. So there we go. And then we're done, really. Um, but to mark all my timbers, I'm going to be using my new picker set. Look at this. It's ace, isn't it? I didn't, I didn't know they did anything like this. But, uh, yeah, that's what they sent us. You've got your pencil there. It's only this one-handed. Standard pencil, which is ace. And you've got a, a carpenter's pencil. Come on, baby. Look at that bass. Right, beast that is. Still got some paper there just to, to get the old, uh, the old sharpening. That's ice. And another thing I didn't know they did. Lipstick. <laughs> Looks like a dog's. Uh, well, we won't go into that. Um, yeah, look, look uh, a marker for all you marking out. I wonder why you can't see that on the camera. It's there though. Beautiful. Very nice, thank you very much. That is ice refills as well, two packs. Anyway, out with the old England and out, be using them. Let's get this built. We have it, stud walls done. Happy with them. Yeah, look nice for my house. Uh, you may have heard the term fag paper joints, uh, maybe on the next job. But I'll try my best tonight. It's all going to serve their purpose. So, yeah, beautiful. Really happy with that. So that's the stud walls done then, as I say. Um, in terms of the rooms, I've still got a lot of studding off the existing walls. Um, I've got to build something there for the shower to bring it in line with the existing wall there so that can then just be dabbed straight over. Um, I'm going to, now I'm in the bedroom here, so this wall is going to be built out um, for soundproofing purposes and obviously in um, thermal insulation uh, properties, which is why here I haven't fixed to this party wall 
at all. Uh, again, that's for sound transference through. So that's going to have some insulation behind it. This, is, this entire wall is, and then it's going to have a stud wall on it to bring it off. Um, filled with insulation then, um, you know, because we don't want the sound coming through. But all that's uh, all that's in the uh, in the future, future episodes. Stay tuned for them. Now then, that is ice. That I'm, listen, I know it's just a pencil, but there's just something about that. It's the size of it. It just feels ice in the hand. Mm, well, um, I just I'm really, really happy with it. It's just I don't, I don't know. I get it. It's a pencil, but you wait till you old one. You're going to want one and all. But there we have it. So thank you, Pickett, for that. It is now a permanent part of my arsenal. There we have it. Uh, right then, I think I've got one more thing to show you. Take a gander at that. They don't look lovely. Beautiful, you can see all the colours it's been in its past life. And it didn't look a million miles better than that jet black that it was. Beautiful, look all the flowers were used to be green and red and whatnot in between. Oh, I think it's lovely. And I'll be very happy just to keep that as it is. Dad wants to do a bit more work on it. He's done a great job up to now though, hasn't he? He's just picked out all this here yet to uh, get the def definition back around these flowers and around here and his detail here and where there was damage he's uh he's filled it all in you know the old trick of getting them um, sawdust and pva to um uh filling holes in in woodwork and whatnot it's exactly the same except he's um he's carved some dust off another one of these stones mix it with pva put it on there and uh mold it round and fold it all back so i was experimenting at the moment with different kinds of sealants for it Look at that though. Excellent. That's going to look beautiful inside, that is. Right then. Right then. I think we'll leave it there for this episode. Thanks for watching, if you've made it this far. Uh, there's no refunds though. Mm, unlucky. Uh, now, I've been saying this quite often at the end of these videos. Um, I've been saying, I don't know when the next one's going to come out. It might not be next week. This genuinely might not be next week because... It's Easter, that's coming up, kids are off, things to do, all that sort of stuff. And I've got, and ne my next job is digging these floors out and going them all down to this level down here. Now, that's going to take a good few days' work. Um, I can't burrow it out either, I don't think, so I'm going to have to bucket it all out. It's going to take me a while, and time lapse wise, it's going to take 45 seconds. So, I've got a, a week or so's work ahead of me that ain't going to make a, a decent episode, I don't think. So I think that's that. So, But bear with me. We've got to start using Instagram a bit more. So I might, if you want to head over there, you want to subscribe to us or follow us, whatever it is you do over there, um, I might support, start putting some photos on, some daily photos, things like that, just to keep the progress sticking over. But in terms of videos, please bear with me. But we'll let you know. We'll let you know. First thing we do have to do is get rid of all this tat. That's going tomorrow to make room. So we've got to clear this room out uh, in order to dig it all out and make a path out uh, to get the stuff out. So uh, we'll be finding out in the next episode how much money is in your house in terms of the cables, look, kept everything, radiators, the lot. So we shall see, we shall see. So yeah, as I say, thanks for watching. Um, uh, bear with us, we will be back as soon as possible. Uh, if you don't see us before, happy Easter, have a good rest, and uh, don't eat too much chocolate, and you'll catch us soon. Thanks for watching.